Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Short Explanations Podcast. This is episode 20. My name is Hyam. Tom is somewhere different. He's some. Is he up? Left or I right? Think I don't I'm, know. I'm, I'm left. I, oh, huh. This side. Oh. And we have a special guest. We have Jonah today who runs the website privacyguides.org. Hello, Jonah. Hello. Thank you for having me. So, thank you for coming so, on. Yeah. So, I, we found this website, Privacy Guides, and the, the, the really simple way that I found it is I was doing some project, and one of the big websites that we recommend forever, I mean, I mean, Tom didn't have, like, a beard when I, last time we talked about this, or when we first started talking about this, like, I was in my old house, it was privacytools.io. It was this website where if you wanted, like, a good recommendation, like, a solid recommendation for something, you would go there. And we were, we were, we, we were plugging and promoting it for years. And all of a sudden, I was doing my project, and... I come across this privacy guides and the first thing I'm like, Oh, this is a scam, all these negative things. And then I looked at it and I went to the about, like, how did you choose all these things? And I read the story and, and I said, we got to get Jonah on. He has to tell us at least the, the Raiders digest version of the story and why should we trust him? So I'm going to let him start and he's going to talk to us. Sure. Yeah. So the history of privacy definitely begins with uh, privacy tools.io. Um, since around Privacy Tools was started in 2015 and it's had a lot of different contribu contributors over the years, um, I joined in 2019 to start working on uh, some internet services that they were running. They had a matrix server um, and we got a bunch of other, and, uh, and some other stuff, and we got a bunch of other team members to work on it as well. Um, and things were going good. Like we, we were really trying to focus on bringing this site into a more like community oriented, transparent direction, especially because we were building so many community features. We were trying to get people on Matrix. We were trying to get people to use privacy tools and talk about privacy online um, instead of just like reading a list of tools and trying to figure it out for themselves. So that was really our focus. But we actually had a lot of problems um, at privacy tools. Um, and I did uh, working with uh, the person who owned it at the time. Um, and so I actually left um uh at the end of like 2020 i believe and i started working on this new site privacy guides because it was it was i wasn't able to take privacy privacy tools in a in the direction that i wanted to take it at the time um because there was just a lot of pushback that kind of thing and it was very difficult working with the owner of the domain name um because they were absent a lot of the time they just were unresponsive to like major changes that needed to be made. If I was running a lot of internet services, I couldn't get basic access to stuff like DNS, name servers, that kind of thing. So it was really, really challenging, right? Um, so I left for a while. I started working on uh, this YouTube channel called TechLore personally, um, along with the owner of TechLore, his name is Henry. So that's something that you could check out. But I wanted to get back into like this kind of written recommendations online again. So I, started working at the beginning of 2021 on this new site, which was privacyguides.org. Um, and just to give you kind of a brief, more of a brief history of how like we moved over, um, pretty much while I was working on this, um, over at Privacy Tools, the rest of the Privacy Tools team who hadn't left um, were still facing a lot of issues with the owner because he wasn't responsive. He wasn't, he was, I found out later that he was basically, he never talked to them at all after I left. So that was like from like September or October of 2020 all up until um, I started talking to them again in like the summer of 2021. There was absolutely no contact from him of any kind. So it, that radio silence was very concerning for them. And uh, especially because like this is coming right out of the 2020 the global pandemic, <laughs> right? You know, anything could have happened to this guy. We genuinely have no idea. The privacy tools domain name is we who knows if it's going to be renewed we have no access to that kind of thing or i shouldn't say we because i had left but they had no access to that kind of thing and they were concerned about that and i was starting this new site privacy guides and i was like hey why don't you just help me out with this instead so that's kind of where the transition began i had like these team members at privacy tools who i was working with for a long time a while ago and i respected quite a lot and I was like, you guys are making some good advice, but privacy tools is kind of in this nebulous state, right? So we can, we can start working on this 
And what they decided was that this is kind of a change that they wanted to make as an entire community. So um, on all the privacy tools channels, the former privacy tools team that wanted to join this new site um, posted announcements, stuff like, hey, we're considering switching to this new site. We're, we're going to be posting things to privacy guides now. We're going to try to migrate everything over cleanly in case like the privacy tools domain expires or something. Um, and and so that's why, and so that was like the months leading up to this change. And then in September of 2021 is kind of when we launched Privacy Guides with like all of our recommendations. Um, and, and the Privacy Tools team decided to redirect the old Privacy Tools website over to it for a brief period of time, kind of caused some controversy here, um, which, which is all like, you know, this is years ago now, so it's, we're, it, we're kind of through it, but we're, we've pretty much emerged now where we have Privacy Guides and Privacy Guides has worked on basically the entire team from Privacy Tools from 2019 onward. Um, and then Privacy Tools, um, a few months after we launched Privacy Guides, uh, the owner came back and he like redid the entire website. It's completely different than what it was when we worked on it. So it's kind of like very distinct websites now. And we really have like no, um, no connection to the, to the current iteration of Privacy Tools, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you go to the Privacy Guides website on privacyguides.org, like if you're really interested in this whole history, we have like a really detailed history in the About Us section. There's like a frequently asked questions section that we have about this privacy tools transition because it was super confusing for a little period of time. And I wish that we had handled it a lot better, but it was very difficult when um, we had like no contact with anybody at Privacy Tools during that time um, and their team was like, in the dark for a lot of stuff. So we tried to handle it as best that we could, but that's kind of the history leading up to the launch of Privacy Guides, if all of that makes sense to you. I think I just kind of rambled on a bit there. <laughs> no, it's it's a fantastic story. And honestly, I I had no idea this was even a thing and, until I got up from Heim. Oh, yeah. wow, this is super interesting. I had no idea that there was all this kind of you know background news behind the scenes. And I'm I'm super glad that you all have managed to, you know, make that transition and build something bigger and better than the original site ever was. This is this is fantastic. Uh like for for all the advice, I know we we talked about this uh in kind of our pre-show setup chat. Uh one of the things that always kind of irked me a little bit uh, about the original advice was a lot of the stuff was, hey, if you're not using Cubes OS and like a stripped down uh, Chromium browser that you've built yourself from source, you will never be private on the internet. And it wasn't like, it was never that. I'm making a big deal out of something. But um, it always seemed like, you know, such a huge hurdle to get like even just a little bit more private. Like if somebody is solely living in the Google ecosystem. They've got Android phones and they've got a Chromebook, you know, and they're like, but it, do I have to uproot my entire digital lifestyle to gain some privacy? And, you know, as we all know, no, you can absolutely start small. You know, you can you know, uninstall Chrome and move to Firefox. And that's a little bit better. Is it perfect? No, absolutely not. But, you know, you can make these small changes that don't involve you know, rooting your phone and, and running the latest, greatest, super secure mod that doesn't let your cell phone talk to any cell towers. Um, you, you can do something a little bit more private, but you don't have to go totally tinfoil hat. Absolutely. Um, that was a problem that I and a lot of people had with, uh, like, uh, the very old iteration of privacy tools where it was kind of built like around the idea of a very specific threat model. Um, it was founded coming right out of like the Snowden revelation. So obviously mm -hmm. government surveillance and like this kind of high threat stuff was really on a lot of people's mind at the time. And I do think that a lot of the recommendations on the site were kind of focused around like avoiding the five eyes or 14 eyes or whatever, you know, and all this mm -hmm. government surveillance stuff. Um, that was kind of the time period. But as we, evolved, um, something that I wanted to do and something that the current team members really wanted to do was take both a more like holistic approach to privacy where we would like focus on um, education about privacy, education about like threat models and stuff, because not everybody's threat model is the exact same, right? So it's kind of a journey that you have to go on 
on your own in order to figure out what works best for you. And then we wanted to um, make it a lot less opinionated and um, at least more, we, we wanted to have more objective criteria and rely less on like um, the marketing for a lot of these tools. I think that was another uh, shortfalling that we originally had at Privacy Tools that we tried to rectify um, later on and then with Privacy Guides here. Um, that's actually kind of the reason behind the name change as well. It was like, we, we don't want to focus on just like, these are the things that you need to be using, right? This is a checklist that you can do and you'll magically become private, right? We want to guide people through like this, this kind of educational journey where we have a lot of like, not only recommendations on our site, but we have a whole knowledge base of like, what is threat modeling? What are like some common misconceptions in the, in the privacy space? What are like, just some introductions to various things like multi-factor authentication, password managers, how like communication networks work. We, we really wanted to focus on the guides aspect of privacy guides rather than just the tools. Um, and so that's a big part of like the reason behind this change as well. Um, I wanted to bring that up because I did see that there was, it wasn't just here are the recommendations you did go through on your knowledge base. And I'm looking at like, why does that matter? And like you said, threat modeling, we talk about threat modeling all the time and being a beginner podcast where we say like, if, if a three letter agency is going after you, this is not for you. We really can't <laughs> help you. But if you're just trying to hide from your crazy neighbor, who's trying to steal your Wi-Fi or has, well, I'm holding up a Wi-Fi pineapple, um, try to do something. We can try and help you there just to be that slightly more private. Like, oh, um, we can't, like, oh, you have to download Linux and you have to do this. No, we just want to tell people, maybe you should move off Chrome. Like, like or maybe just don't use the same password for every single website yeah. you encounter. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we've all like every Internet user has gone through that journey, especially in the age of the early Internet. Right. Where you know, I, I had I thought I was the most secure person on the Internet at the time because I had my three passwords. Right. There was the, the bad password I used for basically everything. There was the Facebook password and then there was the Gmail and bank password. And that wasn't used anywhere except those. Two. Uh, it, you, at, at the time, that wasn't terrible at but you know as we have grown and aged and gotten wiser uh and have been hacked a whole bunch uh we figured out that yeah okay maybe unique passwords is a good idea and password managers that's easier than and then to that's... say oh well you can only use key pass like you have to use key pass which would never it, i i could you can't recommend that to somebody <laughs> if you're just trying to start out with passwords you like we i mean we've spoken for years about prettiness on websites like we have to do better as developers to make things more accommodating and get some design in there and things like like key pass is not going to do it, especially when there's no official app like oh mm -hmm. just download key pass but it's just a framework for somebody else to use so things like that Absolutely. I mean, I I do know a lot of people who swear by KeePass, <laughs> but mm -hmm. but I'm I, I'm not one of them personally. Um, and that that is definitely something that we we try to like think about when we think of our recommendations. We have like we try to include like tools and like point people towards resources um, that'll work for like a variety of people across the spectrum. We get some pushback about this because there are definitely people in the community, right? Who are like, you gotta be using KeePass or like mm -hmm. worst case scenario, use Bitwarden because these are open source. These are like ultra secure type things. But um, like our, the, the specific recommendations on our site, I think the overall point is that they've really taken a, a back seat to more of like the, the education about threat modeling, that kind of thing. Because what we wanna do is like get people thinking about different tools and that's why we have some suggestions because people like people want to know exactly where to look in, in a lot of cases they want to know like what browser should i be using and that's a fair enough question to ask um for sure but we would also love for people to like do their own research and not just take our word for it for example you know what i mean well so Fantastic. i was gonna ask that i was gonna ask that again it's the 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 other site that we're discussing somebody recommended it to us that I, I thought was very, very knowledgeable and trustworthy. That's why we went with it for so many years and there was never a correction or anything else. And so when I came across your site, I'm like, 
why should the question of why should I trust this person? And then I started going through your recommendations. The first thing I did is I went to the VPN section because I think that's our litmus test and see what you said. And it was very big and bold that it says VPN does not provide anonymity. And we have our resident uh, VPN expert, Yael, tell us that Volvad was a good one. And you had that as a recommendation. So I'm like, okay, these people know what they're talking about, at least the, at least with this. So, so let's continue with that. And I was really happy to see how you do go. You pick your thing and you do explain it. And I wanted to circle back and say, as you told your story, this is not, this is typical of a lot of websites. Like that's what happened to us with our podcast are, are somebody else controlled something and we got stuck. And I think setting it up, this is hosted, I think on Git on GitHub or GitLab and everything is open source and everyone knows who's in charge and there's multiple people to make sure that this doesn't go away, which I really do like. Yes. Yeah. Everything that we yeah. do is open source and, uh, and we have like multiple people who have access to, to the domain name. There's no like one person in charge. It's not like my website, right? We have like at least four different team members who who are like in charge of like managing everything and um, have access to like these critical things. So like we're not reliant on a single person. We we set up our uh, legal structure with Open Collective. So now it's like an actual organization holds our money that like multiple people have like the authority to access like things like our budget to pay for the domain name and that kind of thing. So and <laughs> that's that's something that we tried to step away from was like things, everything being reliant on me alone, right? Mm -hmm. And we also take that approach to our recommendations. Um, the VPN recommendations was a huge personal project for me. I think I was probably personally responsible for almost everything on that page when it came to like the criteria. That was something that I tried to like start writing. Um, towards the end of when I was working on privacy tools, but there were some issues with us changing all of our recommendations there that I didn't agree with. That was part of the reason why I left. Um, but yeah, we, we really tried, the VPN page is probably the page on privacy guides that I'm the most proud of because it's the most thorough. Um, it's the most like detailed in terms of like the exact features that we looked at the site and like the criteria section on the site. Um, at the bottom of that page, like tells you exactly what we were looking for in all of these different things. And I think like if you if you look at all of the providers' recommendations as opposed to like software and stuff, that's where we really tried to focus our 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 work on like creating an objective criteria and that kind of thing. Because when you have like a VPN service or an email provider, that's if it's something that you're not hosting yourself, right? That is a lot of trust that you have to put into that person. So that's why we look at those like a lot more thoroughly. And so we have like very strict and thorough criteria for all of these different, like especially service providers um, that we recommend. Um, but something else I would add is like, I well, I did write most of this VPN page and the criteria for it. And then a lot of other people worked on like the email services page. Every single one of these changes um, is really made in a community oriented and transparent process. So all of our writing is done through GitHub pull requests. We have a lot of people who look through those every time, like even people outside the team, we get a lot of comments and feedback from a ton of people. Um, and all of our all of our pull requests, um, which is basically just changed to the, to the site, require at least uh, two team members to sign off on. So it can't just be one person pushing their opinion through. Um, we host uh, this fantastic community forum uh, running on Discourse that I self-host, um, where we like discuss all the new privacy tools that we're recommending. People suggest us tools all the time. It's a really like it's a huge community that we fostered, and it's one of the most exciting parts of Privacy Guides to me that we have so many people who are working on making these recommendations as great as possible. Like th this site is the work of like countless hours and like hundreds of hours, probably thousands of like volunteer hours working on this site, people like contributing to the stuff that we're doing, um, sharing new information and like keeping us in check if like something bad happens with something we do recommend. We'll, we'll know about that pretty much instantly um, without having to keep an eye on it ourselves just because our community is so, is so focused on, <laughs> on making sure everything is correct on here. That's one of the best things about the site, I would say. That's fantastic. And the, the fact that you've got community members not only looking at, but commenting on GitHub pull requests is incredible. Like, you, you should absolutely wear that badge of honor. That is 
awesome. And it's really hard to create and foster a community. And it's it's fantastic. Love it. Uh, I think one of my favorite pages uh, on Privacy Guys is uh, the Common Misconceptions page, because there's there's definitely some spicy takes in there that I completely <laughs> 100 percent agree with and i'm i'm really happy uh that you all have uh not only written this down and published it but that you were gutsy enough to do it right like like saying hey just because it's open source doesn't mean it's more secure than something that's closed source right like it can be and it, in some ways it can be easier to be more secure because theoretically you've got more eyeballs looking at it but you know all we have to do is look back not too far at log4j and that's super open source and it was one of the largest uh you know internet-wide meltdowns of an open source piece of software from a security standpoint and oh man since probably heart right yeah i was gonna um, say yeah <laughs> but i i absolutely love it because uh not you're not just saying the popular things which is you know hey use a password manager we largely do that space of making the popular security recommendations that are easy to swallow. But this is, you know, sometimes a really unpopular take in some circles and you've written the right stuff like it. Yeah, it's that that whole page was really the brainchild of a former team member who really wanted to get get, get this stuff across. And I do think it's super important um, what, publishing stuff like that. You as you as you work in like this space and you create content like this you start to notice um a, a lot of the behavior of other sites um that are recommending like privacy and security tools um uh, that that might not be as legitimate as they try to make it seem to be and there's a lot of like confusion and i would say misinformation um probably intentional on the part of a lot of different other sites because there's that <laughs> it seems like there's a lot of like financial incentive um for like some of the shadier VPN providers, for example, to kind of uh, confuse people so that they don't know who to trust. And so they have to trust like the first person they see basically, you know? Um, so lay laying all that stuff out is definitely a huge, a huge part of what we do because it's com combating that misinformation is a, is a challenge for sure. Well, it's just laid out so well in the sense that that you go through everything and we like like I, I go i go back to the threat modeling and tom goes to the common misconceptions it's just something to read to say wait a second this just builds trust in the team to say they really thought about this it's not like it's not like again we i we use the vpn uh, experience like exactly what you said there's no I don't know if you click on any of the VPNs, if there's any way to make money, if there's no, I don't think there's any affiliate links with any of these. Yeah, uh, we don't have any affiliate links. We don't have any sponsors, advertisements, anything on our site. It's just, uh, just an open source. Is community. there a way people can donate to this project? Uh, people can donate um, on Open Collective. Uh, if you go to our About page, uh, there's a Supporting Us tab um, where we do get some donations. Um, for for a brief period of time, we did accept sponsors from some companies. So we had some privacy companies sponsor our projects, and you can see all of that on the about page. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, we were running like internet services like Mastodon and Matrix servers. We don't do that anymore, which is why we don't really uh, advertise or seek out sponsors at this point. But we we do accept donations from individuals on Open Collective, um, which is kind of our fiscal host. So you can donate, oh, and it's tax deductible even. <laughs> Well, the, the, I mean, the point is, is that I, there are no ads and I don't, I don't think there's yeah. any tracking or anything on there and everything is just laid out. So it's one of those things like this is really a labor of love that to make sure this works. And, and I think we want to really make sure that people hear that, 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 that we really like that. This is like an awesome website that people should be, be going to just just in case you ha you want a new software, you want to recommend something to somebody, just go there, just double check to say, hey, is this really the thing? Because somebody heard about LastPass, oh, as a privacy manager years ago, and they keep on saying, well, I heard about that LastPass thing, I'm going to use it. And then turns out, no, we we've all collectively moved on from there because of a lot of different things, and we should be going somewhere else. So it's just good to ch check up on the recommendations and make sure that you're recommending it for the right reasons. Yeah, 
I'm glad you noticed all of this stuff because it, mm -hmm. it makes me really happy. Uh, there's so many people contributed to this website, but one of the things that I do the most contributing to is like focusing on like laying everything out in a way that makes sense, organizing everything so it all fits together into this really nice project that seems trustworthy, seems like super um, useful. Um, so I'm, I'm glad you noticed all of that because I, I can tell you a lot of work definitely went into, into this site. Well, it's, it's, I mean, that's, un, that's, it's one of those things. Well, again, cause I'm going through a graduate program where I'm learning how to analyze and synthesize all these things. And that was one of the things. And one of the things I teach in my security class is just because something looks pretty doesn't mean that it is. It's just, it's military grade encryption sounds great, but we all know that that's completely nonsense. And we've, we've spoken a ton about these fake services on our show like free credit monitoring and ID theft prevention. And we show how they're basically useless, but they have pretty sites and they advertise and everything else. So it, before we recommend something, we want to go through and make sure that it's, it's at least meets some basic level. And like I said, and Tom said, this really goes to everything you can send people here and it makes sense. Yeah, this is, this is definitely the one-stop shop that, uh, I'm going to send my aunts, uncles, grandmother, mm. grandfather. Everybody is getting this uh, because it's not everything. And not only does it have everything, because there's sites that have plenty of lists, but it's also written in a way that you don't have to have like a cybersecurity master's degree to understand. Uh, I mean, if you have a passing interest in technology. If, if you are listening or watching this show right now, you already have all the credentials you need to go to privacyguides.org, click on literally any section and get instantly leveled up in your knowledge of what's out there, what your threat model should or could be, uh, and what things to keep an eye out. So, I mean, we are, we are at 27 minutes, so I do want to wrap up. Um, I, I'll let Jonah, well, we'll plug all the other stuff after Jonah says his last word, but is there anything <laughs> else that you want to say for us before we go? No, I'm just really, I'm, I'm glad that you're noticing all this stuff. Um, it really is, like you said, a labor of love that a lot of people have, have worked on. So it's, I think it's just a great resource. Um, and definitely like, uh, if any of your viewers come and check out the site, if they have any feedback for us, we do have that community forum that I would love for people to uh, join, send us suggestions because like getting getting that feedback and figuring out what we can improve is definitely how we're how we'll grow this site. So that's and and it look and it's clearly updated. I'm looking and I see 2023, which is always a good thing. I mean, we're towards the end. <laughs> anyway, I'll leave you with we have we do have a signal group. If you have more questions, you want to join our free signal group, it's there. Reach out to us on Twitter and Ma or whatever it is, and Mastodon and all those sites will get you in. Uh, if you have questions for Jonah, you want to leave them there. We can tr we can we can back channel him on that. So with that said, I think we're I am in that group. Did I add oh, you? Nice. Oh. So we, there's that. We don't know who's <laughs> we don't know who's in the group. We just if somebody says they're in because it's a signal group, we 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 do believe in privacy at some level. It's we don't need to know people's business. It's just a nice quiet group where we share links and different things like that. So we want to make sure you're in. And if you want to join us, we we have a good time in there. So with that said, I'm gonna say bye to everybody and I want to thank Jonah and again, privacyguides.org. So bye, everybody. Thanks again.